Yes, it's true. There's a child, and the child is my daughter. And her father abandoned us, leaving us flat. Now she lives with an innkeeper man and his wife, and I pay for the child. What's the matter with that? At the end of the day, she'll be nothing but trouble. And I struggle for all, and I struggle for one. Les Miserables is a teeming theatrical pageant of torment and oppression, love and loss, all played out in song as it moves from 1815 to 1823 to 1832. Hugh Jackman is the resolute fugitive, hounded by Russell Crowe's ruthless lawman, while Anne Hathaway becomes a prostitute by the city gates. Elsewhere, there's Helena Bonham Carter and Sasha Baron Cohen as innkeepers, Eddie Redmayne as a flag-waving firebrand, and more beggars and thieves than you can shake a crutch at. Right, my girl, on your way. I'm pleased to be joined now by The Guardian's very own Marius and Cosette. It's Peter Bradshaw and Catherine Shord. Peter, there's a lot of Oscar talk about this film. Can you, can you see why? Uh, yes, I think I can. Uh, I can only say that if you only see one film endorsing left-wing violence this year, then it has to be Les Miserables, really. Um, it's an extraordinary film in a way. It's bizarre. I have to say, I don't think I'm ever going to love it the way that its fans love it. I, I have a kind of residual sense of skepticism or agnosticism uh, and a sense of the absurdity, the bat squeak of absurdity in this film. But it's very good. I mean, Hugh Jackman gives a performance of very great intelligence and dignity, especially in the opening act. And I can hardly believe I'm saying this. I thought Russell Crowe was very good, I actually. Liked him. It was the very fact that he was singing that gave him a kind of tenderness and vulnerability. Mm. You're saying that basically his ineptitude gave his character a nuance that no, wasn't otherwise no, there. No, I, I don't think I am saying that. I don't think he was inept as a singer at, at all. I think he was actually a rather good singer, unexpectedly good. I mean, I think the whole experiment of live onset singing, recorded live on set, as I understand it, using just a pianist with tiny earpieces for all the actors, and then the orchestral score dubbed in later on. That's all worked, worked very, very well. Catherine, you've seen the original stage production of this, which suggests to me that you're a big fan. <coughs> Does it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me very well. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I like musicals, uh, and that's the disclaimer. And mm. uh, I did pay my own money to go and see it on stage, and I took my own mother. Um, and <laughs> it's, I, start, it's starting to sound rather poignant in itself. Yeah. <laughs> and I will sing yeah, soon. Yes. Um, but uh, and 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 I didn't massively go for it. But um, I'm not a sort of I'm not a hater. However, I did <clears throat> ultimately, I suppose, come down on the side of of quite quite hating this. Uh, <laughs> very much wanting it to stop almost as soon as it started. Um, uh, sorry about that. I mean, it is, you know, there are, I mean, it's impressive logistically in the sense that doing a big shop is impressive logistically. However, I didn't, I didn't, it didn't ring true at any moment for me. I, I, I just didn't get it. I don't, you know, a lot of the big films this year have got a sort of quite an obvious political message. So Lincoln suggests that slavery is bad and so does Django. And you know, it's difficult not to sort of think, well, it's probably got something there. Here, what the hell are we meant to be protesting against? Yes, yeah, it's utterly the... ahistorical, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I mean, just, oh, OK, so a bad cop is bad. Well, yeah, you know, and oh, dear, poverty is sad. <laughs> what I responded to was the sheer melodramatic bizarreness of it. It's so consistent and has such an inconsistent intensity that I ended up admiring it. I mean, I know exactly what Catherine means, and Catherine has already made the, the excellent point that Anne Hathaway's massive Subo turn singing I Dreamed a Dream in Extreme Close-Up, which has been greeted with adjectives more appropriate to the Sistine Chapel ceiling, to be honest with you, uh, is a little absurd because mm. she has a sort of Marie Antoinette look about her, to be honest with you, and considering that she's supposed to have her teeth knocked out to sell to a street dentist, this turns out to mean just her back teeth. Her <laughs> front teeth are all there, and they're dazzlingly white, incidentally. So there are moments of, I think, 
absurdity. Certainly, I that's thought true. the whole thing was absurd. Oh yes, it's, the whole thing is—it like, is a little bit absurd, but I think it's brilliant in its absurdity. No, it's—it's. It's, I mean, I think I'd probably have a prejudice against musicals anyway. It's almost like doing this this great kind of sweeping epic historical drama with with sock puppets, and there's no reason why it can't work. But it's setting the bar really high, and there is nothing here, considering it's about heartbreak and death and betrayal and tragedy. There wasn't any part of it that, that moved me remotely. I'm not sure I was moved, but I was quite excited and thrilled in a bizarre way, like watching a very long and strange bad dream. Uh, as I say, I'm not sure that, that's, that those are the emotions that, that Tim Bevan and Eric Fellner want. But nevertheless, I did respond to it. It did have something. There are lots of other middleweight, bland films out there that don't have half the voltage of this film. And I think even though part of me wants to sort of slag it off and take the mickey a little bit, and I think there are bits of it which do need to be slagged off, I think you've got to respect the sheer kind of resonance uh, and uh, electricity of the film. Now, prisoner 24601, your time is up and your parole's begun. You know what that means. Yes, he's am free. No. Follow to the letter your itinerary. This badge of shame will show it till you die. It warns you're a dangerous man. Stole a loaf of bread. My sister's child was close to death. We were starving. You'll starve again unless you learn the meaning of the law. Know the meaning of those 19 years. The slave of the law.